This video continues the focus on state space models and asks the question, how do I define an output? The previous videos then introduce state space models beginning from first principles. However, so far the focus has been on replicating the dynamics of a state space model, but very little thought has been given to how key values might be extracted. And so therefore, this video introduces the concept of an output matrix. We'll give some examples and that'll make this clear. Consider a generic nth order ODE, which has an equivalent state space model. And this was done on the previous video, so you can look back at that if you need. Here is the nth order ODE, a generic one. You can see it's got an nth order derivative here. And what we showed in the previous video is that one possible state space model for this takes the following form, where you'll see we've defined a vector of states, x up to xn minus 1. We've defined an A matrix, a B matrix, um, and an input. Now, the key thing is, if you can't remember, we define things like x1 equals dx dt, x2 equals dx1 dt, and so on. But you can look at the previous video to look at those. Here's the question then. How do I find the values of key interest? Now, in this particular case, I might be just interested in the value x. But I might be interested in dx dt or d3x um, dt cubed or whatever. But basically, all that this model has given me so far is it's captured the dynamics, but it hasn't told me how do I find the values that I'm most interested in. Now, in this case, an obvious value of interest is usually the underlying state x, which was the last value in the state vector z. So this is what we can do. We can define a matrix C, you can see it here, which is all zeros apart from one in the very last column. And if I multiply z by this C, clearly this is just going to give me x. So I can extract a value of interest here, x, by multiplying the vector z by an appropriate matrix C. Now, if I were interested in the first derivative, which was the state x1, then I could use a different choice of C. Here, you can see C is all zeros apart from a 1 in the penultimate column. And clearly, when I multiply z by this C, this will extract just x1. So the key point here is when I know what my values of interest are, I can define an appropriate C. Now, what happens if we're interested in more than one value? So I might be interested in the state x and also the first derivative. Then we can define a matrix C which has got two rows, one row for each state of interest or each output. And I can do that like this. You can see here my C matrix has got two rows. The top row will extract x and the second row will extract x1. So if I write y equals cz, that gives me an output with my two values of interest. Now, a key point here is the outputs are defined, keyword is defined, as the values of interest. That's what an output is, something that you're particularly interested in. But Often, these are specific states. In the examples I've used here, these are specific states, but they don't have to be. And in general, the defini definition of C is what you want to make it. So for example, you could say my value of interest is y equals 3x1 plus 2x2. That's entirely up to you if that's what you want to define the value of interest to be. And you could define a corresponding C to extract that output. A more complete state space model then takes the following form. You'll notice I've introduced this concept of the output equation, y equals cx plus du. So the states are in x, the system inputs are in u, and the outputs are in the vector y. Now you'll notice here that I've included this term du at the end for completeness, because that's the generic state space model has this. But in fact, 
in the vast majority of cases this D matrix will be zero because if it's not zero it means your system's not strictly proper which means that you can have an instantaneous response to a change in input and most real systems this cannot happen. Some examples then. Find the state space model of a mass spring damper with outputs of displacement and velocity. So first look at the video 2 to find what the state space model is. So I'm just going to give it here. There you go. There's the state space model for a mass spring damper, where all I've given here is the underlying equation z dot equals az plus bf. Now I've been asked to extract as outputs the displacement, which is x, and the velocity, which is v. So I can do that by defining a C matrix like this. You'll see that the C I've written as an identity. The top row extracts the velocity and the second row extracts the displacement. Now I can put it the other way up if I want to. That's entirely up to me. Different example. This one uses the DC servo, which again was discussed in video two. So what it says is find a state space model with outputs of displacement and current. Now, first of all, let's remind ourselves of the underlying model. So here I've used the model which has got three states in it. You'll see I've got the angular velocity of the load, I've got the current, and the angular displacement of the load. So I've got three different states. But I'm only interested in two of these, the displacement, which is theta L, and the current, which is I. So I need to define a C matrix which will extract those two states. And hopefully it's fairly obvious, I can do something like this. Theta L is the third state. So I can extract that by writing a row 0, 0, 1 multiplied by Z. The current is the second state, so I can extract that by writing 0, 1, 0 times the state. So there's my C matrix, which gives me the output that I wanted. So a summary. A more general state space model includes two vector equations. The dynamics are in this part, x dot equals ax plus bu, and the output is defined in this part, y equals cx plus du. So one vector equation defines the dynamics, and that has matrices A and B. And a second vector equation defines the output Y through matrices C and D. But the key thing is, the second equation has no dynamics. So all the dynamics are in the x dot equals ax plus bu.